Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com and welcome to the second of this two-part tutorial showing you how to create 3D floating titles like the ones used in Fringe and Panic Room. Now, if you haven't already watched part one of this tutorial, then I'd strongly recommend you go back and do that because a lot of the stuff we're going to be doing in part two won't make any sense otherwise. Okay, that's enough of the intro. Let's get started. So the first step is to create the 3D text that we'll be using in our scene, and we do that in Photoshop. So we open up Photoshop, hit Control N to bring up the uh, new project window. We'll call this Fringe Title Demo. Make it the same resolution as your target footage. So in my case, it's 1280 by 720 at 72 pixels per inch. And make sure the background contents are set to transparent. Now with the Title tool selected, create the text that you want to use. So we'll just type in 3D text. Now you can see I've chosen Rockwell here. I'll just make it a little bit bigger, but we'll leave the rest of the settings as they are. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, you can only do this step in Photoshop CS5 because it introduces the new feature called Repousse, which if my French is correct, it means rebuild or regrowth. So with the uh, 3D text layer selected, go to 3D, select Repousse and text layer. This will give you a warning that it's about to rasterize the text, which is basically taking all the editability of that text away. So make sure you, uh, you've got your text right before clicking OK. All that Repousse is is um, a fancy word for the extrude tool you'll find in quite a lot of applications like CorelDRAW or even Illustrator. And uh, as you can see, once it's finished the calculations, it's applied a 3D extrude um, effect to our 3D text. Now you can play around with the, uh, the settings, changing the, uh, the materials used, or the light, or even the, uh, the emboss or bevel type, um, but we're just going to leave it as is. That's pretty much all we need to do in Photoshop, so I will save this, and close down Photoshop. Now that we've created our 3D text layer, well, you've got pretty much all the assets that we need to uh, create the final scene. So open up After Effects and we'll import the assets that we've created previously. Now, if you remember back in uh, part one, we created an undistorted version of the footage. If I just open the original footage and uh, just create a quick composition, I can show you the difference between the two. So that's the undistorted version. That's the original version. And you can see it's just straightened out the edges and made the lines of perspective uh, more accurate. So we'll just uh, get rid of the bits that we don't need. Next thing you need to do is import the MA file, the uh, Maya scene file that goes with that undistorted footage. So it's the undistorted underscore AVI dot MA that I created earlier. Now, as you can see, it creates its own composition. So if I double click that, I'll show you what it looks like. Now, despite the fact that I thought I deleted all the tracker points except for the one we wanted to use, it looks like I've actually got two shapes here rather than just the one I was hoping for. Let me bring in the footage that it belongs to. If you remember, we, uh, we were tracking the point just here. So obviously it's this shape that's the uh, one we don't want. So I'll just uh, select that and delete it. And I'll just show you how that object tracks with the point. I've just twirled down the uh, properties of the Tracker 1 shape. You'll see that because we set the origin of uh, the tracker to the point that we tracked, the anchor point and the position values are all zero. Now this will come in really handy later on. Next step, bring in our title text. So fringe title demo .psd. It'll bring up this uh, import dialog box. Make sure the live Photoshop 3D checkbox is checked, otherwise this won't work at all. And we'll go OK that. Now, just like the, uh, the import of the MA file, the fringe title demo has its own project file. Now, if I just double click that to open it up, you'll see we've got a camera, a controller object, and the original 3D text. So if I just grab my camera tool, you'll see that it's movable and positionable 
just like any other 3D object would be in After Effects. So the next question is, how do we mix these two compositions together? Well, it's really very simple. All we need to do is take the control object and the text, hit Control and C to copy them, and paste them into the new scene. What we don't want to do is paste the camera from the Photoshop file into the Maya scene import, because then you'll have two cameras and uh, it'll just confuse the issue. Now, one thing you'll notice is that despite the fact that we've brought in the 3D text, um, it's not showing up on scene. Now, there's a very good reason for that. It's over here. So if we twirl down the controller object, you'll see that the anchor point and the position values don't match up with the tracker point we've selected. But because the tracker point we've selected has values of zero for all of these, you can just replace those values with zero and it'll position it accordingly. So if I just scroll back in, you'll see that the tracker object here with the top left hand corner point, which is the point of origin, matches up perfectly with the center of our tracker for the 3D text, our control object for the 3D text. You'll also notice, unless you're completely blind, that the text is just a little bit on the large size. So I'll select the controller, because everything you do to the controller affects the, uh, the uh, PSD file behind it. Hit S to bring up the scale properties, and just scale it down to about 40% to fit it into the scene. And if I scrub through, you'll see that it matches up. One other thing I might do is just uh, select these two layers. Essentially, they're, they're still um, images, so you can just drag them out to match the length of your footage. Another thing you'll um, notice is the fact that the position of the 3D text controller um, places the text below the uh, point of origin, which essentially puts it underneath the, uh, the plane that we defined in Maya. But uh, basically all you need to do now is uh, play with the position of this text until it fits in the scene where you want it to be. So all I've done is just lift it up on the uh, y-axis and now when we scrub through the scene the text will follow. So that actually looks pretty good to me. Um, what doesn't look all that good are the jagged edges on the text. Now, sadly, this is unavoidable because as we uh, noted earlier in Photoshop, it rasterizes the text. So you lose all those anti-aliased edges that uh, text normally has. Um, I don't know of any easy way to fix this um, other than just to soften it up. So we'll select the fast blur effect and apply it to the PSD file and just type in a value of 2 into the blurriness and it just softens it all off. And now you may be able to play around with other tools like uh, setting up a depth field mat but um, for now we'll just leave it at that. And while I was putting together this tutorial I had a bit of a play combining the, uh, the 3D text um, motion tracking, camera tracking with uh, PFO and uh, also using Mocha to uh, track a corner pin in 3D space to produce this, which is a, it's a little bit like a 3D TV simulation. Um, to do this, all you really need to do is make sure that the, uh, the 3D text asset is pushed backwards on the Z axis. So the point of origin is actually around here, and all I've done is shifted the, uh, the title text back in the Z axis just to give it that sense of depth. And then I used Mocha to track and remove the screen of the MacBook. So you're essentially looking through the screen to a 3D scene behind it, which I think is pretty cool. OK, that's it for this tutorial. Um, hope you found them both useful. Once again, keep your eye open for more tutorials from me, Lawrence Grayson, at shortformvideo.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.